Welcome to another episode of the Catch Up. My name is Oluwa MC Ajayi, your host for today's program. As we all know that we just celebrated the International Human Rights Day, which was on the 10th of December 2019. Coincidentally, Omar Wale Shawore, the former presidential candidate and also Nigerian human rights activist, was rearrested in the courtroom just a few days after this, before the celebration, which got people talking and asking questions as if Nigeria is truly a democratic nation or if government truly recognizes human rights in the society. So the, to discuss this topic with me, I have a lawyer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Barrister Gladstone Dyrus, with me. Hi, good afternoon, Barrister. Hi, thank you very much. How are you? I'm very fine, thank you. Okay, so we are discussing human rights in Nigeria as a topic. So what do you think, what is human rights to your own perspective as a barrister and a lawyer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, Basically, human rights in every given society as um, a citizen is what you get from your fellow um, citizen. Basically, it's not given by the government, you know. It, um, for most countries, is entrenched in the constitution. And then human rights is um, it's global, it's universal. It's not restricted to just, um, just a country. So okay. it is um, very important for every society to respect the human rights. For example, in Nigeria, fundamental human rights are entrenched in Chapter 4 of the Constitution. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so we are all aware that um, Omar Wale Shore, the former presidential candidate and also a Nigerian human rights activist, just got rearrested a few days ago. And it has gotten people talking, people have different opinions on the issue. So what is your take on the rearrest of Omar Wale Shore in the court room? Well, my take on that is, um, to be honest, it is really, really awful to imagine that um, Nigeria as a constitutional democratic nation would um, experience such a thing because as a lawyer, the court is a um, central of justice and okay. you, it, it has never been heard. Throughout my years of um, going through the legal books and being in the practice and all, it has never been heard that um, apprehension was made in court. So I'm sure this comes as a shock to me and every legal personnel out there and I'm sure even to the citizens out there. But it was said that the judge was not on seat during the course of arrest. Well, it is an apparent say because I'm not sure if anyone except those that were in court can actually give details of what happened. What we got to, you know, based on the follow-up statement was that um, a honorable justice, um, Ifoma um, Ojuku, uh, Ijoma Ojuku, um, she actually fled the court after the DSS operatives came into the court and they were trying to apprehend Mr. Shuri. That was what we had, we read from the follow-up you know, statement. Okay, so before then, he was arrested previously because he was arrested and was charged um, for treason. Yeah, um, treasonable federal. Yes because he, he wanted to bring up a protest called Revolution Now. What do you think? Do you think he was just being exercising his human right to protest and then the government took it the other way around? What, what is your take on that? Well, the truth is, generally in every society and in every country, in every regime, in every government, there's always a point where some certain group of people will come and, you know, try and you know, give their opinion of the government and what they think, you know, should be good enough for the government, for the people, you know, a peaceful protest, the, so to say, but in this contest, um, Mr. Shuri might not have, you know, gotten it right, because what has actually been the issue in the, in the situation is that the name Revolution Now is what has made everything complicated. Oh. He has his right. To protest. For peaceful protest. Yeah, okay. Well, when, once you call it a revolution, then it's taking a different dynamic. And no government in entirety, no government will tolerate 
anybody that wants to disrupt the peace and the unity of the nation. Okay, are you saying it's now enough reason to charge him as um, a treasonable offence? The, the truth is, it's for the courts to decide. You know, like every case, you have to tender your evidence given to the court, and the the courts are wise enough in the interest of justice to give fair fair fair, fair judgment. Okay. Yes. Um, in line with its, its constitutional right, the court, the courts are meant to give fair hearing, which is here in both parties. Okay. And then at the end of the day. The court to do what the court does, be fair judgment. Oh. So, All right, so we've heard from the legal perspective. So, we are going to call a honorable all the way from Delta State to give us his own perspective from the political side. And his name is Honorable Ejiro Kadere. Hello, good afternoon, Mr. Ejiro. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, okay, so I have Barrister uh, Darius here with me in the studio, and he has given his own perspective on the rearrest of Mr. Showery in the courtroom legally. So we are calling you to give us your own perspective politically, your political point of view in this case. Exactly. Thank you very much. Well, you see, um, as a matter of fact, there can be no democracy without the rule of law. What okay. transpired during the Rearrest of Sowori is a public shame. It is the situation of the devil of justice. Okay. It should not be allowed in a democracy. It okay. is a shame that occurred in a country like Nigeria. Okay. Um, the eminent personalities from different walks of life have actually come forward to air their reservations about such and uh, ugly incidents. Okay. It's a shame that happened under the regime of, uh, um, of um, Major General Buhari. It is a shame. It, 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 politically, it is not, not an ideology that should have been, have been thought about in any quarter. You understand? And it is, it is, it is further disheartening that we, we expected people from people from different quarters to, to rise up in the education and, and uh, call a state a state by speaking against that occurrence. But alas, uh, that has not been the case. We expected uh, the, the head of the judiciary to make a pronouncement. We, we expect the senior leadership to make a pronouncement. We understand their position because today it is uh, uh, so worried that it's under attack. Okay, Honorable Edro, I, I want to ask, you know, the DSS came up and said that they did not arrest Shore inside the courtroom, that that video is false and it was acted. So what do you think about that? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, it, is, it is appalling when institutions of government try to take Nigerians for a right. My dear, our, our level of intelligence is not limited by the kind of leadership we have in this country. If, if our leaders are not thinking, it doesn't mean Nigerians are not thinking. For, for a department of uh, the president to come out to put up such childish uh, an excuse for such uh, uh, desecration of the temple of justice, it is, it is, it is, uh, 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 but according to the video, sorry, sorry to cut you short, according to the video, um, they said that there is no DSS personnel in sight, inside that video, that it was only people from the courtroom, the lawyers and also show supporters that were in, that was in the video. A senior, a senior advocate was there present in the person of Teddy Falana, and the man had come out to say, why did they then apologize? Yes, it's 
why were they in the premises? Why were they in the in the first place? Thank you very much, Mr. Ejo. I want to ask you this last question. It's a, it, we, we all know that um, several people have come out ever since the arrest of Sho Mr. Showery, come out to call, to speak against the government, especially in the U.S. We have U.S. senators speaking against the government. What do you? How do you think that is going to affect Nigeria as a country? Yes, yes. Um, it goes to show. It goes to show our standing in the international community. When we have no respect for rule of law, there are there are various ways it affects our relationship with uh, other countries in the international community that do have respect for the rule of law. Yes, and it affects some of their business interests. It has. It has been tried to pose a lot more, more effect than we get to, to think, than our leaders get to think, that they get to, 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 to think it to. Like the American senator from the JC that he's going to raise it up in the Senate, and that's on the basis of that. Their relationship with that, they will be with you. You might, you might wonder why you must have no of aid or some direct uh, foreign direct investment from coming in from America. Or counseling, translation of things you otherwise find in the past. All of these things affect us in more ways than we can think. Both our leaders are big, uh, uh, short sighted, and uh, I really want to say, do this. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Ager. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, have a lovely day. Yeah, you Okay, so that was. Honorable Ejero from Delta State, what is considered a violation of human rights? Well, a violation of human rights um, comes in existence when you cannot exercise the um, basic um, fundamentals that have been entrenched, particularly in this part of our nation, in the Constitution. You know, and it goes ahead to talk about you know, the right to life, liberty, you know, fear and you know, the likes of them. You know, when you cannot, um, you know, basically act up on your rights in, in any in any circumstance, you know, you're not supposed to be restricted to how and when and where you exercise your rights at any time, except for the exceptions that the constitution have also entrenched. You know. Now, do you think Nigerians understand human rights? The well, use of human rights? Well, um, that is a good question because this is um, a basic part of the, the constitution or the law that every Nigerian is supposed to spend their time in trying to educate themselves. And then it goes a long way to even tell about the government. The government should even set you know, mechanisms in place to try and educate its citizens. Because uh, there are a lot of Nigerians on the way uh, that they don't even know how to exercise the basic you know, fundamentals. You know? They talk about things that uh, they, 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 they misunderstand the fundamentals to be something else. You know? They glamour for their rights in, in aspects where they're not supposed to glamour for their rights. So that, that essentially means that they don't even know the basic fundamental human rights. Human rights. Human rights. So why do we talk often about human rights and not human responsibilities? Well, human rights um, goes a long way to look at the responsibility of the government towards the citizens, protecting our rights. But um, human responsibility, in, in, in other words, might, it might be like the responsibility of the citizens like, to update uh, the, the, the government you know, and, and themselves. You know. So, yeah, human rights is more, is more expensive, so to say. It's more expensive because human rights goes a long way universally, globally. Human rights does not need to talk about does not does not come in existence just in the four walls of this nation. Anywhere you are, you as have a the human right being, human. your human rights are activated. It's but it's sorry to cut you short, but it baffles me when we often talk about human rights and not talk about or act responsibly as humans. Do you understand? Like we as human beings, we are res we have 
the responsibility to also act by the law. Do you understand? Okay, so in a situation where a human is acting against the law and then he or she is still shouting or trying to let you know that he has his right as a human being, don't you think we do not really, we, we try to mix those, those two yes, things up in Nigeria basically? I agree, I agree, I agree. But um, when we talk about human responsibility in relation to the law, that's quite cumbersome because else you don't need to hire a lawyer. You know, a human responsibility in relation to law is for is we're talking about um, say for example the criminal the criminal responsibility. Like when you go against the law of the nation, you know that's. That's, that's in the criminal jurisdiction, and you don't expect a citizen to understand the entirety of what a criminal law is, okay. except for, but for a lawyer that has put in education. But for the fundamentals, it's a responsibility for every person. It should be taught in our schools, you know, everywhere. Everybody, the common man should understand, okay, these are my fundamentals. So any day, any time, you can stand up, because there are times where even our police department they go ahead of themselves, you know, to infringe on the liberty of our citizens. You know, so as a citizen, if you know your fundamentals, that's good. But in the long run, talking about your responsibility in relation to law and the government, that's for the government. The government has set up laws to, you know, to put everyone in that confined space on the sand. This is your responsibility to the government. All right, thank you very much. So how do we know when and how to defend our rights as humans? The truth is, you just have to put in that work. You just have to know, because without, without the information and the knowledge, you're lost. Yeah. That's true, you're lost. So we need to urge ourselves and then urge the government to to help us. And also create more awareness. Exactly. Awareness. Awareness is a key, like you said. It's, it starts from the foundation, our, our, our students, you know, secondary schools, you know, university. I mean, you, you cannot be at a university level and then not understand that you need to hold your human rights. Your human rights are your defense. That is a, it's a defense and it's a weapon. You know, once there's a bridge, you know when to defend it. Sure, yeah. That's the point. Thank you very much, Mr. Darius. It was really nice having you here. Oh, As you all know, my name is still Oluwa MC Ajayi, and we are at New Golden Hotel number 21 Kigoma Street, Sun 7 Abuja. And please follow us on all our social media accounts. We are on Instagram as BGTV underscore online, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as Bengbiru TV. Thank you very much for watching. We need your comments and likes. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Bye.